Hi everyone, we're going to verify this trig identity by writing everything in terms of sine and cosine and eventually we want to get 1. So let's get started and write our tan and cotan in terms of sine and cosine. So we're using our quotient identities. So we have sine divided by the, uh, cosine minus cosine divided by sine. Do the same thing for the denominator, um, but with a plus sign. Now, if you'll permit me, just to save room of what I'm writing on, I'm going to deal with this later, because um, I need just need to simplify this first part, and then we're going to add this a little later. So basically, my common denominator is cosine theta, sine theta. And then if to get that, if I need a sine theta here, I have to multiply also my numerator by sine theta, just so we can get to our new common denominator. So this is going to be sine squared theta. All right, this one here, same thing, I need a cosine theta. So also multiply this by cosine. And that's going to give you minus cosine squared theta. Now we're also going to do that for the uh, denominator. And then we have cosine theta sine theta. Now what happens is um, if you have this A divided by B divided by C divided by T, and this would be my A, B, C, and D. This equals A, B times uh, D, C. So what happens when you do that is you can just cancel these two because they're going to single out because D is going to be in the numerator, so this will cancel out. And sine squared plus cosine squared is 1 according to our Pythagorean identity, so that's just 1. So we're left with sine squared theta minus cosine squared theta. Now we're going to go ahead and add our um, 2 cosine squared of theta. So what we have is sine squared theta and 2 cosine squares minus 1 is just 1 cosine squared of theta. And again, according to our uh, Pythagorean identities, this equals 1. And that's our desired result. So we're done. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.